This is Flipper Zero. And this is most definitely not a Flipper Zero. Yet despite the colors being slightly inverted, it's the very same dolphin sitting and chilling and watching TV. Hi hi, Agatha des. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of the early versions of the Kisu development board that is compatible with Flipper Zero firmware. It really is a card sized board, although the thickness is a bit different. It measures the thickest at the type C port and at the battery. I think the battery being the thickest but still less than 5 mm thick, which is about five cards stuck on top of each other. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a battery to put in here, so we'll be using a Type-C port to power it. But first, let's take a look at the board itself, and I'll try to describe how it looks and feels. The screen is definitely smaller and the color is different, the buttons feel really stiff, and I'm not a fan of this placement. Also, weirdly, the back button, not like on the right, like what you have on the flipper, but it's on the bottom left. And generally you have to use a lot more force to press them, they're more clicky, and after a while my finger starts to hurt, so not a big fan. Quite interestingly, the next version will have the buttons moved up here instead of the battery, and the battery will be down, so pressing them here would be easier and a bit more anatomically correct. Also, if you would wish to hide them between other cards in the wallet, you could just slide it out somehow and press the buttons here, and you have the screen here. So half of it hidden, the controls are available. That I like. And uh, well, it's a board. It's probably been ordered in China, so you can expect good quality with nothing tearing off easily. There are a bits of hand solder here and there, but as far as I know, this board was used to uh, test the antennas and find the appropriate capacitors. The thing may have some development leftovers. The quality is what you can expect from a professional Chinese factory. Uh, the GPIO is uh, spaced out the same as in the flipper. The only thing is, is that if you look at the bottom, there is 5 volts here and 5 volts on the flipper. So there are some pins missing on the flipper, which are available on Kisu. I don't know why, no idea, but you get more pins. So, let's plug it in, shall we? Display in it OK. It's probably one of those Arduino displays, and although the resolution is the same, it looks quite different from the flipper's a yellow backlit one. The first thing that greets you is a message that the secure enclave is damaged and there are no factory keys found. That is because this board doesn't have the flipper's encryption keys, and I'm not sure if it will uh, ever will have those keys, because Flipper Zero is probably guarding them. As for the menu, yeah, you can press the buttons, and uh, in my testing pretty much everything works except for the UTF. The UTF says that certificate error doesn't want to run. Everything else, the sub gigahertz menu, you can press read, I have no idea where the antenna is on this thing, but it can definitely try and capture something. Yeah, that's me sending it, and it's getting some signals. Yep, I'm not sure the 
RFID works. This has not been fully complete yet. And as you can see, the antenna, if you saw the flipper on the inside, it's much, much different. So there will be different values for tuning it, for tuning it right. Interestingly, the flipper's mobile app is fine with this board not being a flipper. So, Flipper Zero, turn on your Bluetooth. I think the thing has the Bluetooth on. Yes. Okay, that's one, but that's not this one. And here's the Kisu. Can we connect? Will we connect? Mm, unable to connect. Uh, oh, white. Let's pair. Tap to pair. Yay. It offers the code. Weirdly. Not from the first try, but five, six, seven, zero, five, two. Are we happy? Yeah, we're happy. Kiss him you. That's, that's the name of the flipper. I can go to the settings, yeah, to see, and it even offers to update the firmware. What happens if I press, aha. Uh -huh. So this thing doesn't have a vibrating motor. When you press it on a real flipper, it goes bzz, 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 and also the sound. But this thing just, just the sound. Which is fine, I guess. Uh, I mean, we can we can play some annoying music this way. So it works. Q flipper also does the same. Like it just recognizes it as a flipper. I I actually haven't tried booting it without the SD card, and I'm not sure what will happen. Let me just change the viewpoint a bit. Still anything. It just says that it needs an SD card. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You can you can have a different SD card. Why not? Happy now? Oh no, failed, failed. The interesting thing is I thought that these two buttons, I mean when when you're when you're using a flipper and you press the left and back, it reboots. It reboots quite fast. On the Kisu, though the buttons are closer, I can't reboot it by pressing back and left. Okay, one, one thing I didn't try is updating firmware. I mean, it should work. It should work. Let's try and press the big update button. Wait, I have an SD card. What is it that you don't like? Mounting failed. Maybe I have to... <laughs> the thing is really, really not nice. Let me just... So yeah, I, I really don't like the buttons on that thing. My fingers hurt already, so I will be using the app with the excellent uh rpg maker bindings to navigate it and format the sd card since it seems not to like something about it mm -hmm. system no that's not system storage yeah format yes please yay it's formatted do you see it now Mm, yep, I think it does. No databases go to. Yeah, sure, that's about where I am. And now we can press... What do you mean? You have the... Okay, this next bit is going to take some time. I'm sorry. I'm going to speed it up as much as I can without skipping it over completely. It feels a bit dangerous holding it like that. I mean, the only thing that powers it during the update is the 
Type-C connection and pulling on it hard enough may yank it out and then I'll probably have something closer to a brick. And since it doesn't reboot on the left and back, I would probably have a hard time restoring it. Also the official update, uh, I mean it might break it. It shouldn't, but it might. Let's wait some more, it feels like the pixels are moving just slowly. Yeah, real slow. Yay! The same no key factory is found nag, and the secure enclave is damaged. Now, uh, what can be done about this? I think one of the things is just rewriting the firmware a bit so that there will be no nag. But that seems to conflict with the idea of the developer of having a device which is like 100% compatible. But flipper devices have left a nice, a nice security for themselves, so just saying that, oh, you don't have an original flipper, the secure enclave is damaged. There are actually, I think, a few ways to solve this. So first is to do the firmware thing which is to bypass it in custom firmware and uh, since this thing it it lists a digital accelerometer and compass and a temperature and humidity sensor and an ambient light sensor none of these are really in the official firmware so they will need apps for each one of those and making a fork sounds pretty rational to me. Uh, another thing is if Kisu will have their own keys, it will go and get them into the official firmware as another set of keys, trusted keys. I'm not sure that Flipper Zero will go for that. Another option is stealing or hacking them. I mean, you can, you can try and steal them off the chip which is very secure, by the way. Uh, Flipper people are trolling everyone with, uh, if you'll manage to get our encryption keys, go and get a bounty from ST, because this chip hasn't been broken yet. But maybe, maybe, maybe with time we'll have something. Otherwise, everything works, and I think bypassing it in firmware would be the easiest thing to do. Maybe, maybe someone doing an Unleashed will include this device and make the necessary changes since nobody really runs stock. So what do we have now? We have a device which works. There is a version 4 coming. Here I have a secret picture from the developers. And you can see that the keypad has been swapped with the battery. There are some changes on the left, mainly this to uh, infrared thingies have been swapped and there are some added thingies here which I'm not sure what they are and yeah that's that may even not be the final version there may be some changes later maybe they will move the back button to the right where it should be where it rightfully belongs as far as I know the developer doesn't need any help at least they're not actively looking for help so now we just wait and see. Thanks for taking a look. I hope I didn't take too much of your time. This is a fun little thing and if I'll get an next version, I'll be very interested to take a look at that as well. That was Agatha with an early Kisu. Thanks. Bye. See ya.